Right, apologies in advance, the image quality isn't quite what it should be, but I am filming on my phone right now. <clears throat> so, I was going on to Gearbest looking for a new watch, because I previously had the Yule phone you wear, and it's a nice watch, but it doesn't like rain. When it rains, the screen starts flashing, and it just doesn't work. So, I looked for a watch that looked a bit more like a watch this time. The other one tried to be a bit of a Apple smartwatch wannabe, but I wanted something that looked smart, and lo and behold... I found the K88H, I think it's called. You can see I got the leather strap option. Apparently it is leather, made by Fortune Toad, the strap. Genuine leather, I think it is. And um, basically, this is a smartwatch, which seems to run a very similar software to the Your Phone You wear, but a newer version and more refined. So, <clears throat> as you can see now, it's the default, um, the default theme of the watch, if you like. Um, first thing I like is you can change it quite easily. So, the default's this, you can get a nice digital one. I downloaded this one, which I'll show you how to do later. Uh, here's another one that comes with it by default. Incidentally, I'll go back to it, I don't think the stopwatch works. It says stopwatch, or it might tell you what month it is, but then that tells you what month it is, I don't know, but that dial doesn't seem to work. That one does work and it tells you what month you're in, obviously shows you the day as well. You have this fancy one which I don't think they actually do anything I think oh no the phone works Go back um, oh, please don't stay on that one I don't even like it uh, you've also got this one you might have noticed these watch faces can be a bit over the top um, yeah, so this is why I downloaded another one. Again, I'll show you how to download them later, but this is what I'm using right now. It's a really simple digital clock. So you can see Bluetooth, it's connected to the phone, which I'm filming this on, and it shows you battery indicator. So this is one I've chosen. But yeah, you can download, there are quite a few to download. You get these through an app, which again, I'll show you later. But the first thing to point out is how many faces you can get of this watch. Next, let's go into the watch itself. You've got phone book which you'd hope you do with a smartwatch. Uh, it's a bit washed out. Let's turn the brightness of this. Oh, that is lowest. Uh, I'll just have it off altogether. That works too. So you've got your phone book. You've got your dialer. Yes, this can work as a phone. I haven't actually tested the call quality on this, but it does seem decent. You dial on here. It actually dials it on the phone. So this isn't a standalone phone. It doesn't have a SIM reader. This is like a hands-free. So you dial the number here, it dials it on the phone, buttons are nice and large. And you can see the display is clear as well. Like I said, I haven't tested call quality. You've got messages. Let's reconnect to the phone. It disconnected because I walked quite far away before. You'll see when you connect, the app does tell you it's connected, which might get a bit annoying after a while, hence you can block it. Text messages it says empty. Now, I don't know if this works or not. I do have text messages, but it might only show if there are new text messages. Thing is, I read all of them on the phone anyway. Next, you have call log. Ooh, it's a bit washed out, isn't it? Let's put it on top of some tape. There we go. And focus. Perfect. So you do have messages, call logs, which does work. You've got notifications which I'm sure as soon as my phone gets a notification, there you go, just got another notification. Again, saying it's connected, I don't want those. Now what you will notice is you get lots of notifications about the weather from your phone. Your phone's very communicative. If you've got Google, any app installed from Google, your phone will be mess weather messages to your watch constantly. Additionally, if you've got one of those fancy widgets on your home screen that gives you the weather, that'll send it every few minutes. You can block those, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. You've got Find Device. I'm not going to test it out because it does stop recording if you do. Basically, it makes your phone ring until you tap the screen. Don't do it accidentally. It's very hard to turn off and very loud. Calendar. This is a bit nicer than the old phone you wear. At least it's got a nice interface with it. Hope you can see on the camera. Focus. Focus and then it gets washed out. It's weird. There we go. So um, if you want to go into the calendar, tap there. And it's just a standard calendar. You swipe up and down to change the month. You swipe left to go back. Uh, Bluetooth, here's where you'll connect to your phone. Like, if you wanted to connect to the phone, you go there. It's already connected. Um, it's got music. You can remotely play music. You need to 
it, depending which app you use, you can choose which music you'll play. As far as I can tell, you can't just browse every track on your phone. Music player looks a bit like this. And did tapping play just quit out? Oh, there you go. Phone's on mute. If I put a phone volume up a bit, still can't hear anything. It's not playing anything. I've set it up to play the um, tune in radio apps tracks. So whatever I'm listening to on my phone will beam over. You need to play it on your phone first, and then it'll beam it to your watch, and you can listen to your music on your watch. Again, I don't really see much point. Bluetooth camera. I'm not going to open that because I'll stop recording. Basically, you can remotely take pictures. Um, I can't film it, but basically, the picture quality is really bad when you do this on the watch, because you can see what your phone sees. And it's really laggy as well, so you sit your phone, say, facing you. We want to take a selfie from far away and don't have a selfie stick. Put your phone down. On your watch, tap BT camera, and you'll see what the phone sees, so you can sit in the right position or whatever. But uh, it is really hard difficult to use, I wouldn't recommend it. Alarm. This is a more intuitive one. You can set the time, you choose dot repeat. You can choose the alarm tone. Yeah, disconnect that. So, this is what they sound like. And I think I've just booted myself off the phone. Anyway, you can choose alarm type. This does have a good vibrate in it, this watch, so that should suffice. That's how I set the alarm time. Pedometer. This seems pretty accurate. It's easy enough. Just start, stop. You can also view your history. It'll tell you how many steps you've actually recorded. You can see I've just been playing around. I don't take any of this stuff seriously. You can set your goal here as well, so it'll tell you when you've reached your goal. You enter your height. Now, as far as I know, this is used by the app that accompanies the watch, which you've got to download, of course. It doesn't come on your phone by default. And I think that uses it to work out how far you've walked or something like that. Because your watch can tell how many steps you've taken, but the distance is pretty inaccurate until you set it up properly. Sleep monitor. On the Yule phone you wear, this was terrible. You'd, if you didn't move at all, as if you were dead, it would say you slept well. If you move one bit, say you just move your arm, it'll say poor sleep quality. This is different. He started, you see I'm moving around here. It says good so far. I don't know what constitutes bad, I haven't made it go bad yet. And the help feature doesn't really tell you much either. And you can see I've only tested it really this once. But, um, I don't know what it does, but it does whatever it does well. Siri, I don't have an iPhone. Uh, let's focus again. I don't have an iPhone, so this doesn't really apply to me, but if you have an iPhone, apparently, you can tap, focus, you can tap the microphone and you can actually use Siri for your watch. I don't see what the point is, because if you're using Siri on a phone, chances are your phone's nearby and your phone can hear you anyway, but there you go. Heart rate, that's what it said last time, put in your wrist. There seems to be a couple of sensors on the back, you can see it there, and um, those somehow sense your blood heart rate. I don't know how accurate it is. Seems a realistic number, but again, I don't know how accurate it is. Sedentary. This detects how long you've been sitting for. Focus. And it warns you if you've been sitting for longer than the amount you put here. So say you want to get up every half an hour, every hour and a half. You just enter it there, it'll give you an alarm. Sorry, my phone keeps going out of focus. Uh, voice memo. You can see if you've got Bluetooth music turned on, you um, can't really do anything else. So let's try recording. Okay. Well, this is what a voice memo sounds like from the watch. Now let's play it. I don't know if you could hear that at all, but you can hear it sounds, if you could hear it, it sounds like an old walkie-talkie. Not the best quality, but it is convenient. And actually, let's go back in to show you storage space. Uh, it's got 10 minutes of recording time, roughly, so not bad. This could be quite useful. Power saver? I don't use this sort of thing. On, I use it on the Yule phone watch, and it just meant it kept disconnecting from your phone, which got very annoying after a while. And it didn't actually save that much power. App. Now, this is a QR code you scan to get to a page which lists the apps for you to download. Now, I didn't actually download mine from there. I went to the Play Store. And I finally found an app that works. Because there are lots that are clones of each other, but I found only one works properly with this watch with my phone, which is your phone future. Talk about that later. Stopwatch. It's about as plain as you can get, really. 
It works, it tells the time, it resets, and what more you could want. Motion. Now this is a nice one, wake up gesture. So I'll leave the watch. I hope eventually it's, the screen's going to turn off. Or my phone's going to run out of memory, one of the two. There you go, it's going into power save mode, I think. There you go, it's off. Now, you move the watch, like you move your wrist, and it turns on, as you can see. So, maybe if you're walking along, arms going for back and forwards or whatever, it's going to be a bit annoying as the watch will keep turning on or drain the battery, but <clears throat> it could look at it this way. You want to tell the time, you just move your wrist, so you're facing it, and the watch will turn on. So it's quite convenient, but it could drain the battery. If you want to turn it off, here's where you do it. Shaking switch main menu. I haven't really tested it. In theory, if you shake, it should go back to the main menu. Or I don't really know what that does. Shake to answer a call. I haven't tested it because I don't really want to use it as a phone, but it's there. Clock. Here again, you can change the clock type. I didn't explain earlier. To change it here, you hold it down, and you can swipe like that. You just hold your finger down. Here's all the different ones. But equally, you can do it from in here. Time sync will sync with your phone, you'd hope. Otherwise, you set it manually here, including time format. I assume the format syncs. And there's a home button here I haven't mentioned yet. Not the best sensor in the world. It's like one of these touch-sensitive ones. But in theory... There you go. It'll go back to the home screen. You've got to make sure the screen's not greasy when you do it, or it won't really recognize your finger. Main UI theme. Now, the UI has two themes. One is not really a theme, it's just black. Two. Oh no, this is a different one. It changes the style of the buttons. So you can go to the really minimalist one. I'm almost tempted to say a bit like Windows Phone style. Really minimalist. Or you can go back to the default one, which is a little bit more colourful. I prefer this as cheerful. Calculator. I want to know what 6 times 3... No, 6 times 9 is. 54. There you go, works. Theme. This is what I'm thinking of. So background. You can have black, no background. Or you can have stripes, like carbon fibery style one, if you've got that style in your car at all. Or you can have little um, raindrop type things in the background. I'm just focusing on those. So I've just gone to plain, but it's nice to have a selection. Settings. Bluetooth settings. You can Bluetooth on or off. If you have Bluetooth off, obviously it's just a watch. I mean, you can change watch faces, so I guess it's smart like that, but it won't talk to your phone. It won't get any notifications. Visibility. Again, you can hide it from other phones. So once you've set it up with yours, you can just hide it from any others. Clock settings, the same one you've seen twice so far. They like reusing this one. Sound settings, you can change alert. Alert's really annoying, I found. I put on vibrate only. It's really loud. Otherwise, even on lowest volume. Ringtone. Same as the alarm tones, exactly. That, incidentally, is the sound it makes when you turn it on. Notification tone, turn it on this. That's the one it was on by default and it's really annoying. Um, and there you go, that's sound. Volume, you'd hope it would turn it down. You can set up a notification on one, it was still too loud. The others I thought were fine. Display, you can choose brightness and timeout, 15 seconds, you can change timeout even to 60 seconds, no longer. You don't really want it on for more than a minute at a time. When you're not using it, it will drain the battery. Battery lasts all day, by the way, at least. I think it could last two days. I haven't tested that yet. International, you can change language, apparently. Not auto sync if that was off. You can see what language is available. English, French, Spanish, Polish, Portuguese. Right, I think it crashed and reset itself. Now it's connecting to the phone. Okay. Uh, no, don't uninstall all apps. I'll show you what apps are about in a bit when I record something else. So I can. Oh look, <laughs> watch is almost out of battery. No, that's my phone. Oh well, my phone's almost out of battery. This watch's battery is really good. Um. Yeah, I know. So you can change the language as I showed you. Um, you've got German, Italian, Turkish, and Russian. 
You can change the order of name display for the contacts list. And that's about it. You've got these two apps here that I downloaded myself, Yahoo Weather and Kadoon. I'll show you how to do these later. Yeah, I know the battery's low. You see the notification gets anything from your phone. My phone's nagging me right now. Um, but yeah, these apps don't really open. Maybe the watch isn't powerful enough, but you can at least download them. Just want a good look. Last thing before my phone dies on me, this is the box it came in, completely generic. Yeah, I know 1%. Uh, it's made by a company called Junsun, J-U-N-S-U-N, I found out. Nicely packaged. It did come with a manual, which I've lost already. It was really basic, though, and didn't have a company name on, but, yeah, top marks for the box. Nice, so I learnt that there are several apps out there with the name Fundo, which, of course, isn't ideal, because you don't know which one's real. This is the one I downloaded. It's called Beware. This is also available under other guises, which I'll show you in a minute. And, um, yeah, it looks like a sports app at first. Let's see, you've got heart rate monitor, which is what you're looking at now. Actually, let's sync this. Sync data, data sync. No data sync, okay, so it doesn't think there's any new data. Um, you've got heart rate monitor, you've got discover, which is more of a social thing, which... I don't really know. I mean, who else do you know who uses this app? I don't know anyone else who uses this app, so that's not much use. Sync data, I've just shown you. Um, you've got settings, obviously, like any app. You've got user settings. Here's where you can give um, your gender, your height, your weight, your birthday, which all use, I think, to calculate your health profile from whatever measurements you give them, or whatever else they'll do with them. Notification settings. This is where you can choose which apps can talk with your watch. Now, how is this related to a sports app? It isn't. The app's not really a sports app. That's just the first thing you see. This app's really about interacting between your phone and your watch. So you see here you can choose what's allowed to talk to your watch and what isn't. Um, you can make an SOS call directly here. I don't know how that's related to your watch. Alert settings. You turn these on, it's going to be a nuisance. You can turn a range alert on. And um, you can calibrate a range size, so you need to take your watch far away enough that the phone can still see it, and then tap this button, and your phone will warn you when the watch goes that far away again. I don't see the point in it, really, unless you always want your watch with you, but also the alert is the loudest, most piercing noise you could have heard. It's the most annoying beep you'll ever have, so honestly, I don't recommend it. So this is what they say the functions are of the app. Receive notifications such as email, SMS, and calls directly to your watch. Remote camera, it's all of these, blah, blah, blah. So basically, this app is how your... Oh, there you go, pedometer's updated. Basically, this app is... Well, and my watch is now claiming I've disconnected it. Um, this app is how your phone talks to your watch. Without this app, your phone won't really talk to your watch. And it's crashed. Okay, maybe I've got too much open. Yeah, I know, it sucks, you just told me that. Was there anything else left in this app? So, you can set your goals. I don't have any goals, so it's gone for the default. But, um, okay, it's reconnected the watch. But you can set goals and it'll tell you when you've walked far enough or whatever. So it's calculated my distance from my steps, which might be slightly different than what is on the watch. That's because it's actually done number crunching and seen how far things are walked. So, um, that's everything for the app. Um, it's more useful for what you can't see. It's essential if you want your watch to get your text messages, your notifications, things like that. So this app does that behind the scenes. You won't see any evidence, but it does it. So let's look at what else is available in the Play Store to do with Fundu. Yeah, right, MediaTek. So when you look up MediaTek, MediaTek smart device is the first thing that came to mind for me as an app. Because, let's face it, every Chinese phone and watch seems to have a MediaTek chip. And it did look like the official app. You can see it as screenshots. And in fact, I did use this app for a while. It worked really well, apart from one thing. So it could find your device, which the Fundu one doesn't seem to be able to do. So it'll make your watch ring. There we go, Fundu where has gone. Um, what? Oh, shut up. 
What's most interesting for me is the My Applications one. So you see here it suggests you apps for your watch. Yeah, weather, digital clock, Kaduna. I installed all of these. In fact, that digital clock face is the one I'm using now. Now, the way you did it was you simply tapped install and you did through Bluetooth send the app to your phone. So I thought that was really handy. Unfortunately, with this app, the um, phone couldn't send text messages to the watch. The watch would just say currently not support. And um, yeah, I wanted my texts. So then I searched for Fundu. Lo and behold, Fundu Companion, Fundu Smart Device, Fundu Wear. MediaTek comes up here as well. And BT Notification, which is probably the worst app of the lot. This is what I used with my Your Phone You Wear watch. And I regretted it. It can do almost nothing. So I went for first Fundu Companion. You might think this looks familiar. Yeah, they all rip each other off. Unfortunately, this app couldn't communicate with my watch either for texts. Everything else was fine, it couldn't do text messages. So I installed that. Fundu Smart Device. This might look familiar. Remember the MediaTek one? Yeah, again, copied. But uh, this couldn't send texts either. So in the end, I went for Funduware. Now, Funduware can send text messages, but you might have noticed it's a bit more sparse than the others, and not as much you can do. What you can do, though, is my applications. So if I try and launch the app without it crashing, it's never crashed before this video. I don't think it likes my recording app. Go here and go to my applications. Please sync first. Okay, I'll sync my data. Data sync. Alright. No data. Well, I hope it accepts this then. There we go. Okay. So you can see digital clock. Well, it doesn't think I installed it because I installed it from the other app. White clock I've installed. Didn't like that one. Installed black clock. Installed Yahoo Weather. So you can install apps still. Um, in fact, the selection's better and they install faster. So, it's a decent enough app. Like I said, if you do want an app to communicate with a watch, this is the one to have. Funduware. You can't, I don't remember what that name is. I can't translate it from Chinese because I don't speak Chinese, but that's the app. So, um, as I'll show you something I learnt, I'll turn a camera on. I think you've seen it there. That tilt, that movement feature for the app screen, if I tilt, there we go, you see it motions at the top. Tilt my wrist, voice memos at the top now. So there you go, that's a hands-free way to change what menu you're on, even though you need your hands to select an option. Really useful. But on the bright side, it's a really attractive watch. If I could be bothered to put a strap through there just now, it would have looked even better. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else I could physically cover with this watch. If you're still watching, well done, you must have no life. But thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, as always, it's a nice way to end it. As always, um, just ask in the comments below. It's a great watch for the money. It's probably the smartest watch you can possibly have for that price, with its leather strap. It looks smart. I've had people admiring it already, so go and get it. I paid £30 for it, roughly. I got it from Gearbest. It arrived in two weeks, and... My watch keeps disconnecting now, it's in that cycle. Um, I've had it for about two weeks, I've had no problems until I've been recording this, where the app crashes, and um, the battery does seem to last at least two days. So, there you go, thanks for watching, and um, any questions, just ask.